I am so excited for today's workshop. Woohoo! Um, a lot of you here are members of Kids Comic Studio. Um, and as you know, for we do our these events every Wednesday at 1230 Eastern time. Um, and I always talk about what are the upcoming studio events. So next Wednesday um, is going to be our live critique session. So anybody who wants to bring something to that we can discuss, it can be sketches or synopsis or website or query letter, anything at all, um, that is happening next Wednesday. And then the Wednesday after that is the last week of the year between Christmas and New Year's. Um, and I am going to take a vacation that week, but Jeff Larkin has volunteered to host a hangout at 12.30, our usual time on Wednesday. I don't know, is Jeff, are you here? He might not be here at today. Um, but anyway, um, it's gonna be super casual, hang out and just chat about anything comics at all. Um, so that's what's going on for the rest of the year. I don't think we have any other interviews or anything. Patrick and Sarah, I'm not forgetting anything in my... I just heard a rumor that Jeff was coming up with some fun activities for the socials, so. Very, very just cool. Spilling a little tea there. Okay, all right, well, let's jump in. I'm going to share my screen because I created a little presentation for today. Oh, and oh, let me check the chat though first before I do that and see um, people are talking about where they are from. Oh, Eliza or Eliza, it's your first Eliza. event. Noah? Yes? What's that? I didn't oh, hear just... that, sorry. My first yeah. time. Yeah, my first. How do you pronounce your name? Aliza. Aliza. Okay, great. Yay. Thank, thank you so you. much yeah. for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. Yay. All right. By the way, I don't, I don't know if you know, I'm, I'm in the Negev Desert. Oh, my gosh. So what time is it? Over here, it's 737 in the evening. 737 in the evening. Wow. Yeah, it's dark outside. Be... Okay. Right? You yeah. might be the furthest away of anybody here. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming, Eliza. Okay. Um, Bay Area, Philadelphia, Chicago, New York City. Okay. So welcome, everyone. Let me share my screen. And slideshow. Okay, can everybody see? Yes, alrighty. So today's event is special because um, one, we've been, you you saw that we posted a survey in the community because we were planning for 2024. It is almost the end of 2023 and you would think that maybe we had our 2024 plan already together, but that's the way we roll. We're, kind of, we're always a little bit <laughs> late with things, but one of the things that we are really, really firm that we want to do next year, which we haven't really done up until now in Kids Comics Unite, is we want to facilitate more challenges. So sort of like group activities or prompts that we do, you know, if you wanna participate, you can. Um, we are very excited. We have uh, several ideas already. And if, um, in fact, you know, if you guys have ideas for challenges, definitely post it in the community or email me and the team and let us know your ideas. Um, and we thought maybe one of the great ways to start off 2024 would be with a challenge. And let's see what I wanted to, okay. Another thing I want to mention is that this weekend, December 16th, is the anniversary of the date that I created um, an account on Mighty Networks for Kids Comics Unite. And Kids Comics Unite originally was an in-person meetup, but I only had two. I only had two meetups in a cafe in the Lower East Side in New York City because then wow. the pandemic happened and everything went online. Um, but because KCU originally started as a regular old meetup in a cafe, I thought it would be super cool for our first challenge to be 
asking you guys to organize your own comics meetup. And that's what this presentation is going to be about. So these are a few examples of meetups that I've heard about or I've been to, um, things I've found online, just to give you a little bit of inspiration. So there is an event called Drink and Draw Like a Lady, which is women comics artists in New York City who get together, I think like once a month or so for drawing and they have live music and stuff and it's super awesome. Um, I've actually never been to it, but I have been to another um, meetup event in New York City that I think might sort of be on hiatus right now. It's called Women in Comics. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little story about how Women in Comics kind of led to Kids Comics Unite. Um, and then there's this thing I found by searching comics meetups on meetup.com. So you can go to meetup.com and search for yourself what type of artistic comics related events are in your local area or creative writing events. Um, and then this is um, an organization that I kind of knew a little bit about, but I found out a lot more about it. It's called the Boston Comics Roundtable. Um, and they host regular meetups in the Boston area. Um, and I found out about them because I went to a book launch in Boston of one of my clients. And I would say like 80% of the people at her book launch were from the Boston Comics Roundtable because she's a member of it. She's gotten to be friends with so many comics creators in the local area. And they were so thrilled to support her at her book launch and buy her book. Um, and I chatted with so many cool comics creators at the, this book launch event. So that's how I know about this one. But, you know, there are organizations like this in lots of cities, in Brooklyn, in Portland, in LA. Um, if you're in a place that's not a, a, as metropolitan as that, maybe you start a little one in your local area. Um, mm -hmm. And then I want to talk a little bit about online meetups. So um, Jeff Larkin, who's a member of Kids Comics Unite, started the Clip Studio Cafe, which is an online group that meets and talks about Clip Studio Paint and how to use it and techniques and answering questions and all that type of stuff. So meetups don't have to be local. They, um, they could be online, especially if they're related to a specific topic area that you want to bring people to get together to really go in depth on. Um, and then the Early Birds um, group inside of Kids Comics Unite is all about graphic novels for young readers and people who are interested in creating books for kids between the ages of five to nine or so. So these are all different examples of meetups. And then I want to show you this really blurry, I apologize for the bad resolution of this photo, but this is from the KCU meetup that we hosted at New York Comic Con this year. So it was just like two months ago. And as you can see, we were all around a table. We had lots of beer and alcohol. <laughs> um, and it was a really cool mixture of people. There were people there from Kids Comics Unite. And then there were people um, like some clients of mine, people that I know from the industry. So it was just a really great mixture of people. And the one thing that you don't, or I should say the person that you don't see in this photograph who came to our meetup was Raina Telgemeier. <laughs> Believe it or not, Raina came to our meetup and we forgot to take any pictures that included Raina in the <laughs> photo. So um, anyway, this is just all to say how much I love meetups. And well, I, I basically already talked about, I, I think meetups are super awesome, but I also want to say that I think meetups can actually be transformative. And I want to read you a quote that I really, really love about this. So Amy Poehler, the comedian said, find a group of people who challenge and inspire you spend a lot of time with them, and it will change your life. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about some ways that meetups have actually been 100% transformative in my personal life. And I'd love you to be thinking about your life. And um, when I say the word meetup, I just mean any occasion where you've come together with other people who are interested in things that you're interested in. 
um, and something has happened as a result of that. Because I would love to hear some stories from you guys. Um, but so, okay, talking about how meetups have impacted me, I mentioned that um, Women in Comics was this networking group that I went to a number of times. Um, I mean, it's been on, around on and off for a while. Um, and I'm, I I don't exactly remember when was the first meetup of the, theirs that I went to, but maybe like six or seven years ago. Um, and in 2019, that was the year that I was thinking to myself, I think I'm, I might want to take the plunge and become a literary agent. So I've been working um, in comics for a long time, but I had mainly worked in editorial and business development, not as a literary agent. Um, and at this one women in comics um, meetup that I went to, I was just chatting with some cool people there. And one of the people I was talking to was this woman named Liz Francis, who was in the process of starting a new publishing company. And her um, small press is called Street Noise Books. They specialize in graphic novels for teens and young adults that have an activist slant. You can go look up Street Noise Books online. They do really, really cool books. Um, and as I was talking to her, at, at some point I said, so how did you figure out your contracts? Like what you were gonna do um, to work out the contracts with your, the authors and artists you're gonna be working with? And she said, oh, I found this really great contracts consultant um, and she helped me so much and I'm working with her and, and that's how I'm doing it. And my spidey antenna were like, <laughs> I need this information so badly. Uh, and so I, I was like, oh my gosh, can I have her contact information? So she gave me this person's contact information. Her name is Deirdre Smarillo. And I right away the next day, I e emailed Deirdre and I said, um, I have this background in publishing, but I've never been an agent. I'm thinking about um, becoming an agent and I really need help with contracts. And as it turns out, Deirdre is amazing. I have been working with Deirdre since that email that I sent. She, I work with her on all my contracts. I thank the heavenly stars that I am working with her. And I owe it to this meetup. If I hadn't had this random conversation with somebody at this meetup, um, I would never, I, I think I might not have had the courage to, to take the, you know, to jump off the cliff and become an agent because contracts are a beast. You know, you need you need to know what you're doing when you're working on contracts. Um, so that's one story. And then the second story is that when I did decide, okay, I'm really doing it. I'm I'm starting my agency. I I thought to myself, I think I should start a meetup like women in comics, um, but specializing in or focusing on people who are interested in kids comics. So writers, artists, editors, agents, art directors. Um, and because I had been going to this women in comics event and they were hosting it at this, uh, really cool cafe in the Lower East Side that had, um, like a lot of open space, but it was really cozy and they had drinks, um, that you could buy there. It was just like the perfect little spot. I felt like I'm just gonna follow their lead. I'm going to contact this venue and I'm going to ask them when they have avail availability. And so I did. And, um, that's how Kids Comics Unite got started. So this is, um, I actually, I wanna pause here and I'm going to stop my share because I would like to ask everybody here, have any of you had some sort of an experience at a meetup or a group hangout with people um, that really made a difference for you? I would love to hear. Jenny. Uh, I'm, okay, sorry. Oh, so, and then I think, was it Chris Buchanan? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you, you're after Jenny. Um. So for me, it was the um, SCBWI summer conference in 2020. So the one right after the pandemic, and it was the one that they had shut down. Um, 
it was their first shutdown and they were doing it remotely because I think it was one of the earlier remote um, events. They got these just insane people <laughs> to come. It was amazing. And um, like Philip Pullman was the keynote speaker. Oh my God. <laughs> But the amazing thing was it was also, you know, after George Floyd was murdered. And so they were, it was, this was the beginning of NCBWI trying to take like some stab at diversity. And so what they had was all these amazing people that they paired up to interview each other. So um, it was like Grace Lynn, Alvina Ling, Jason Reynolds, um, Kwame Alexander, um, Oh, shoot. What is she? Lori House Anderson. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was just and they were just sort of dropping all of these things that I'd sort of never heard before. And the things that really stuck with me were. Um, Jason Alexander, Alexander, I get it. Well, and he, um, he's they were talking about what age do you write for? And mm -hmm. he said because he's a he's a black author writing for. Um, black kids and he said well I don't think of it as having some specific age because I'm writing to people who felt not included in kid lit at the beginning so I am writing for people who you know, may have a maturity level higher than their their like reading level and just the whole idea that you could write for the age you were inside was just, was amazing to me because I don't, I felt sort of sheepish about the fact that I was like this middle-aged woman, but I still had all these interests of, you know, an 11 year old. And of course, now looking back that a lot of that is because I have ADHD and I'm still sort of this like kid forever. And, um, and then Laura House Anderson and um, I forget who her partner was. And then they were talking about being women, like middle-aged women and how they were, you know, doing this like financially. And nobody had ever, as far as I was knew in SCBW, I had ever talked about money mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And that was when I was like, oh, maybe I can do this. Wow. Thank oh, you. Oh, and Raul the third. I mean, the whole thing was just like, oh yeah, I know. Right. In the beginning, the Tuesday night, um, we, it was kind of similar with us. We had um, Jean Luen Yang, and uh, Mark Siegel from For a Second came and talked to us. And uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> it was like, it was life-changing. Like someday I'm going to write them all a letter. Wow. Wow. All right, Chris. Um, I had something kind of similar because I went to one I, it, right after the pandemic too from SCBWI and it was online. It was amazing, but I don't remember those people. So I might've hit the spring one or winter one anyway. Um, the meetup I was going to talk about was SCBWI um, small critique groups here in the Northwest region. Mm -hmm. um, Cause they're, they're literally, I was on one last night. I'm brand new to this too. And, um, and I'm trying to write books also for uh, I call them high, low, like uh, teens mm -hmm. who really don't read well. Cause there's seems to be a ton of them around here. Um, and I'm a speech therapist. And so um, anyway, so they helped me by, um, I'm trying to get my three manuscripts together so I'm ready to go to an agent and or publishers and uh so they're really helping me and everything they suggest is like completely changing it for the better like I'm just like because at first I thought this is great and now they're like light years better every revision because everything they say is just perfect anyway so they've been great um so I love them and they're handy because they're on zoom and I don't have a lot of time to drive around everywhere <laughs> So, and I'm not in New York, so, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If you're not in one of those, like, well, New York is sort of the epicenter of publishing, but there's a lot of other places in this country. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're bringing it out here. Like when you mentioned Comic-Con, um, there's this cool bookstore in Portland, Oregon, Books with Pictures that actually won Best Bookstore in the World from the Eisner uh, Award. Oh, they're pretty wow. cool to check out, totally inclusive. But they were over, I was trying to get my book in their store and they were at New York Comic Con. So, you know, it it comes out here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, thank, and I so love much. Jason Reynolds or Ryan Reynolds or Jason Reynolds. No, Jason, Jason Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah, <laughs> that, long Way Down is kind of like the one I was working on that I self published, but mine's like 50 pages for kids who don't read, basically, mm -hmm. and nonverbal people. So, mm -hmm. I was into that. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yay. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Janice, I saw your hand up. Did you want to say anything? No, sorry. That was on default. Sorry. No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. 
All right. So show of hands, I guess. How many of you here feel like, yeah, I think maybe I might be interested in organizing a meetup? Okay. I see a lot of hands. That's really cool. How many of you feel like I am super intimidated and this doesn't, this sounds scary? <laughs> A couple, I saw a couple hands. I saw a couple hands. Okay. Well, for the challenge, the actual, let me go back and share my screen again. So our challenge for the month of January is host or join a KCU meetup. So you don't have to host it. Uh, if you, if you attend the meetup, then you have fulfilled the challenge. <laughs> so it's either one of those two things. But a, a lot of what I'm doing in the presentation today is I'm trying to provide you with a little bit of support and resources so that if you do want to host a meetup, you have some, you know, some tools to get you started. So the first thing is I created a plan a comics meetup checklist. And I spent a lot of time uh, trying to organize my thoughts on this and make sure that it was pretty comprehensive, which, and to be honest, I could have used this checklist myself for the past four years. Um, too bad I didn't have it until today, <laughs> but but now we all have it. So yay, yay for that. Um, so let me, let me see here. I think, do I want to, what I'm going to do is, I'm asking myself, should I go through this checklist? I guess I will. Okay, so I have to um, stop share and then reshare, I think, so that you guys can see it. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm thinking as I'm, that's why I'm hesitating here. I have a link to this checklist, which I will put in the chat after I go through it. Or actually, I can do it right now. Let me click share and then copy link. And then put this here. But I'm going to share this checklist in the community in an article post. So don't worry about it. Um, you'll you'll all get have access to this. So basically, um, can everybody see the checklist? OK. Um, I start off with some questions to help you get started. And I'm going to come back to these questions because these, I think, are the key jumping off questions. Um, and then I have two sections of this checklist. The first is how to plan an in-person meetup. And the second one is how to plan a virtual meetup. So really it's totally up to you. I would say, um, generally speaking, if you wanna meet local creators, obviously um, having an in-person meetup is fantastic. And I am planning to organize a central New Jersey meetup in January. So I can get to know any of you who are in the New Jersey area. Um, but if you want to do something that's more topic related, then maybe a virtual meetup would be, be better. Like if you want to do a deep dive into um, nonfiction graphic novels, for example, have a discussion about that or, or a book club or... Um, you know, if, if you want to talk about Procreate or it's just anything specific like that, the nice thing about a virtual meetup, of course, is that people anywhere in the world can attend your meetup. So you can easily find people who are as obsessed about whatever specific topic it is that you really love um, to come together and do something related to that topic. Um so yeah, so the, the way I've structured this checklist is that it's basically um, what to do right away, like the initial steps that you're gonna need to take to plan a meetup, and then what you would wanna do about one or two weeks before the event, reminders for what to do at the actual meetup, and then how to follow up afterward. So that's what's in this checklist here. But now I would like to go back to the, let's see. Ah, I'm gonna have to stop my share for a second because I wanna go back to the presentation. Well, 
So first, I, maybe I should ask, do I have any questions so far before I get into the kind of questions to think about? Nope. Okay. Let me go back. All right. Um, I'm, I might jump around a little bit in this presentation. Yeah, I'm going to jump around. So I'm going to talk to you about the big picture questions that I think you should think about if you are thinking about taking the plunge and organizing a meetup in January. So the first big question is, what is the purpose of your meetup? And it could be your purpose is just to hang out and have fun and just do it at a bar once in January. And that is awesome. That's probably basically my plan for my meetup is just let's hang out at a bar and meet new people. Or maybe your goal is you want to learn something together or really focus on something together. Or maybe it's practicing together, like a drink and draw, which could be, you know, an in-person event, or it could be online. Um, so knowing what your purpose is, is then going to help you make some decisions down the line. So the next thing would be, who is the audience for your event? So if you are really about socializing, then just the audience would be other kids comics creators in your local area. And for me, um, I think I will probably invite just not just um, writers and artists, but also any editors or art directors, maybe even librarians who are in the central New Jersey area and who are really into kids comics. Um, so thinking about your, your audience that way, or maybe your audience is people who want to dive deep on something with you. And then the next question would be, do you want to organize this yourself or do you want to do it with some other people? So maybe right off the, the top of your head, you're like, oh my gosh, if I could do this with, you know, um, like if I was in Boston, Janie and Lindsay, my, my kids' comics friends in the Boston area, wouldn't it be cool if the three of us could put something together? Um, so if you want to do it with some other people, that can be a way to kind of get over nervousness. Um, so that's a really good way to go if, if that might work for you. And the next um, question to think about is, do, do you want this to be just one thing? You're going to do it in January because Jana is hosting this challenge and wants you to do it. Or uh, do you want to make this a routine, regular thing like Jeff's Clip Studio Cafe or the Early Birds um, group that Sarah started? So think about what feels right to you. And you don't necessarily have to make a decision. You could just organize a one-off event to get started and see how you feel. And if it goes really well, then you could decide that you want to make it, you know, a once a month thing or once every couple months or something like that. And then um, decide whether you want the meet meetup to be in person or online. Um, and for you know, if, if it's really all about socializing, then in person is definitely going to make a lot of sense. Um, if it's really all about going deep on a topic, then online would make a lot of sense. Um, and then the final thing is decide if you'd like to have a speaker. I would say this is kind of like advanced <laughs> meetups is organizing a speaker to come in and talk on, a, on specific topics. Um, and for most of you, I'm guessing that might be a little too much and you probably don't want to go that route. But if you do, it can be really cool. So I do want to, I do have some tips in the checklist about if you do want to do the type of meetup that involves speakers. Um, so that's just another thing to think about. Um, now I want to go back. Well, actually... I want to stop again and pause here and ask, do you have any questions or thoughts based on what I just laid out? Or maybe I forgot something. Oh, I, I don't think you forgot anything. Oh, Sarah. And then I think Kevin, I might've seen you. Yeah. Oh, now I'm just wondering, uh, what if like, what if I don't really know anyone in like, the area I'm in and how would you like connect with people um from like kids unite or you know, yeah. I just 
It's around. Great, 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 great question. Okay, I'm actually going to show you how to find people in your local area on Kids Comics Unite. So I'm going to share my screen. So when you go to, oops, the home page, can you guys see Kids Comics Unite on the screen? Hopefully you can. <laughs> um, all right. When you go over to the left there in the um, sidebar, there's this members button. If you click on members and then up here at the top, there's these little buttons. If you click on near you, that is going to show you a list of everybody who's in your local area. And you can just kind of keep scrolling and it's going to go you know, in concentric circles outwards from you. Um, and so what you could do is you could write a little template email or message that's like, hi, I'm Sarah. I live um, in blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking about just hosting a comic, kids comics meetup uh, in such and such town. And I just wanted to check and see if you might be interested. And so you you have that template message. And then what you would do is, um, let's say Cynthia, who I actually haven't met yet, and she lives in the town right next to me. You click on the little three dots next to their name and click chat. And then you can just send them a message directly inside of Kids Comics Unite. And then you, I mean, it's kind of a pain. There isn't a way to message everybody within a certain, you know, uh, mileage of where you live. Uh, you have to do it one at a time, kind of just going down. But that that is how you could reach out to people on Kids Comics Unite. Uh, the other thing that you could do is you could post the meetup in two places. You could post it in Kids Comics Unite so everybody in the community sees it. And, and you would put the, the name of your town in the title of your meetup. So like, let's say me, I would say Central New Jersey Kids Comics Meetup. So people know in this local area, this they're invited to come. Um, and or you can also post on meetup.com, the big platform meetup. And that that's a little bit, I mean, you're basically opening it up to random people <laughs> if you do that. And, you know, you never know who's going to show up, but that is a route you know, that people take to start meetups. Does that answer your question, Sarah? Yes, it does. Actually, it makes me feel a bit more uh, like less intimidated as everyone was saying. <laughs> Where are you located, Sarah? I'm actually in, in Toronto, in Canada. Oh, and... well, in Toronto, you are right in, you're in Comic Central. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I would definitely check out. I, I did not know that the members list had like very specific countries. And Yes, yes, awesome. there are definitely people in um, from Toronto in Kids Comics Unite. Um, Scott Robin, who was one of the Kids Comics Intensive um, students like two years ago, is a librarian in Toronto and he specializes in Kids Comics. So Right off the top of my head, I know an awesome person who could come to your meetup. That's um, great. Okay, uh, Kevin. Well, my question was exactly the same great question that Sarah asked. So you did a great job in answering it. Okay, cool. Let me see. I'm just looking at the chat. Um, ooh, oh my God, Chris, great idea. Asking a school librarian or teacher to come and share. Such a great idea. Um, okay. Awesome. All right. Let me just feels like January is really fast. That's what yeah, I true. You're doing this. I know I'm already I'm actually going to New York for a few days in January, <clears throat> but to visit my daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just I'm just wondering if that has felt like that to anybody for me it's just hard there's locally too because um there are so many groups going on and so few people involved in this mm -hmm. I, I already know that I'm not saying there aren't some hidden people and there's lots of kids probably <laughs> involved mm -hmm. 
like going to the library for for um, graphic novels groups. Um, yeah, well, you can look at it this way in terms of the challenge. Like maybe what the challenge is, is instead of like have your meetup in January, get it on the event calendar by the end of January. You know, that 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 way <laughs> we've, all, all I really want is for everybody to, or not everybody, but I want individual people to meet each other and mm -hmm. build connections with each other. So it really doesn't matter to me when you have your meetup. It could be in November of next year. And if you have a meetup, I'm going to be so happy. So very happy. So, um, but yeah, it, like I like having deadlines. So maybe let's say that the, the challenge really is getting your meetup on the event calendar by the end of January, 2024. So, and yeah, totally, totally flexible. Um, I had a, something else I was going to say, Bonnie. Oh, oh, the other thing I was going to say is that if your meetup is three people in a cafe, that is just as good as something with like 20 people in a, I don't know, bustling bar, you know? I think really the point is just getting together with another human being. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter how many yeah small small hangouts are really 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 wonderful too oh christine in-person meetup at an art museum or gallery yeah you know i just i saw that um there is uh an exhibit in new york city of um meiji era japanese art and I was looking at the posters advertising this exhibit and I was thinking about how much um, of a continuum there is in Japanese art from woodblock prints to comics, like how you can just see the, the n n sort of visual conventions are, they, they come from this long history. And I was thinking, oh, it'd be so cool to go to this museum exhibit with some other comics nerds. So, but I think the exhibit closes like January 7th or something like that. So not a lot of time for that, but I love the idea of a museum get together. Um, yes, of course, invite any people to join your meetup. Yeah, um, Bert, I'm answering your question, Bert. Is it okay to invite other comic creators? Of course, yes. Um, Okay, now let me see. Well, oh, so the other thing I want to show everybody here is how to set up a, an event in Kids Comics Unite. So let me share my screen. All right, so let's go back here to the feed here. Um, can everybody see? Give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen with the, okay, cool. Um, so if you go again to the left sidebar in Kids Comics Unite and you scroll down to the events section here, there the first item says KCU events. That's events that we organize within KCU. And the next one is community events. And everybody has the ability to go into this community events um, tab and create your own event. So what you would do is you click this yellow create button up here and then click on event. Um, and then you would add in the information about your meetup. So you would put in your title, you can um, choose a date, you know, uh, let's say it was like the last day of, day of January, um, you choose your time and it's gonna show you the time zone that it's, it's whatever time zone you have in your Kids Comics Unite account. So for me, it says EST, but what's nice is that you put the event in your time zone and if it's a virtual event, it's gonna um, automatically show the particular time zone of other members when they're looking at your event. So they'll see it in their time zone. Then um, you decide whether your meeting is online or local. So if your meeting is local, you click this local button right here. And as you can see, the, the fields change down below and that's where you would put the the name of the restaurant or cafe or you know wherever you're going to host your event. You can put the street address. You can put a link to the 
the venue, if it's a restaurant, you put the link to the restaurant, or you could put a link to a Google Maps, um, you know, drop pin or whatever you want in terms of the link here. Um, I, I would recommend keeping RSVPs on because that way you know who's planning to come to your event. Then you can add an image for your event. So you click on that and you upload your image. Um, if There's this little thing down here that says more image options. If you click on that, oops, um, this allows you to upload a custom thumbnail image, which is basically a square image. I do recommend that you... Um, create both the header image and the thumbnail image if you can, because it just makes it look nicer when people are looking in the Mighty Network um, in different views. So if you click on this question mark there with the header image, it tells you what the aspect ratio should be for your header image. Um, and then for your thumbnail, it's just gonna be a square image. So it can be any, ratio, any size, but square. Um, and then here you would put your description of the event. And when you put your description in, make sure you are as detailed as possible to really tell people what to expect and the type of person who would be a good fit for coming to your event. Um, so for me, it would be really general. Just, you know, I, all the people that I said I am interested in coming, if you live in the central New Jersey area or you can easily travel to the central New Jersey area. Um, if you want to do an online, a virtual meetup, you would click the online button and it has this drop down menu. Uh, so you could choose between a Zoom, a meeting, a webinar, live video, or text chat. There's all these different types of meetings that you can schedule. For most people, I recommend sticking with the meeting type, even if you're going to be using a Zoom link, um, because Okay, I'll be honest, I'm a little scared about what would happen if you click Zoom because, well, I guess you 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 sign in with your own Zoom account because we at KCU have our, our Zoom account and you're not, I don't think you would have access to our Zoom account. But at any rate, the easiest thing to do, I think, is just click meeting and then put the link to your event. So if you've scheduled it in Zoom, you have a specific Zoom link, you just put that Zoom link right here in this link. Um, if you're doing a Google Meet event, you can just put the Google Meet link right here. Um, and then the same thing with filling out the rest of the form. And then you would click this post button right here. The other thing that you can do if you are um, still, you know, if this is the first time you've ever created an event and you're, you're still ironing some things out, you can create a draft of your, so you basically fill in some of the information and then you click this saved draft here and it's going to save it. And you can always go back to it later and finish filling it out and then click post. Here is, I'm putting into the chat, um, two resources. One is the checklist that I showed you already. The second one is a sign-in sheet. Um, I put this, I created a sign-in sheet because it is so important if you're doing an in-person event to have a place where people can write down their name and their email address so that afterwards you can follow up and send them a thank you and maybe send them photos of what happened at the event. Um, and it's easy to forget to have that sign-in sheet. So that's why I created one that you can copy and do it. You, you can edit it however you wish. Um, so both of these documents what I recommend or what I ask you to do is make a copy and then you can go in and do whatever you want. Um, I scheduled a post inside of our Kids Comics Unite that just posted at 1.15 p.m. asking everybody, are you thinking about hosting a meetup? So I'm challenging you now to answer this question inside of Kids Comics Unite if you're thinking about hosting one what kind of a meetup are you thinking about so that um, you kind of hold yourself accountable and we can all um, share ideas and maybe you'll find other people in your local area if you are thinking about doing a local meetup as a result of posting your answer to the question. Um, any, any last, does this all make sense?
Well, I wondered if it'd be okay if I um, plug an event for the early birds group real quick, yes. because it's kind of a, okay. So um, this is an experiment. I haven't done an event like this before. So I just wanted to take this moment for anybody here who is planning on going to explain what it is. So um, Jana, would you mind if I share my screen? So um, the way, can you see Big Bird? Yes. Okay. So the way it came about is um, my favorite thing ever happened. My husband's work office work party was canceled. <laughs> and since I'm an introvert, I'm like, oh, yay. What will I do with this time? Um, so I came up with this event. It's a movie that some people here already know that I'm obsessed with. Um, and the event is a text chat event. So um, the early birds group is free. You do have to join it to attend the event. Um, but the way it works is I've posted some places you can watch the movie. Some of them are free. And so we would all log on at the event time, kind of press play on the movie. And then there's a special text channel where we can have a text discussion. Um, or you can watch it and text later. I know my husband hates when people talk during movies, but I like to. <laughs> So um, it's scheduled for tomorrow afternoon. If anybody wants to drop in and just see what it's like, we'll just say hello in the chat, press play on the movie, chat during and after the movie, and just a way to get together. Um, plus, I just love this movie for anyone who creates for kids. They had some revolutionary ideas, and it's so inspiring. So I just wanted to kind of get together and hang out around that. But at any rate, if you're into early uh, graphic novels, younger readers, and want to join the group, it's free and there's some great discussions going on. So we hope you make it there. Thank you. Does so anybody much have any questions about the um, the way the movie night event is going to work? Okay. What does early birds do in general when they're not doing movie night? Um, well. Uh, it's just getting started or I think this is week two, maybe, yeah, week two and a half. And so far it's just been kind of some conversations about things that are particular to the younger readers. Um, we were, this morning we were talking about Janie Ho's presentation yesterday because there was this awesome discussion about page count, which some people might've been like, oh, that's nice. But I think people in early birds are like, yes, 64, 80 up, down, all of it. So it's that kind of thing, those particulars of making books for this set of readers that we've been discussing back and forth. And um, I just posted something about a book that I like and people, Roger and Lauren, especially, and uh, Milani came in heavy with other book recommendations. And so my TBR list was immediately filled. It's just been really good conversations between people, I think, who've been looking for the other young um, writer, writers for young readers to talk to. So come in and take a look. You don't have to commit to anything. You can lurk for as long as you like and just see what we do in there. Yay. Thank <laughs> you so much for talking about that, Sarah. I guess sure, I'm, thanks. I think Jeff must not be here because I, I would ask Jeff to talk about Clip Studio Cafe, but I think he's not. He here. is, he's got some friends in town. Otherwise I know he would love to, but, um, may I just say something on his behalf? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, you should have never given the microphone to me. I'm not <laughs> giving it. Um, Clip Studio Cafe has been amazing. And um, he hosts a weekly session, which a lot of times he'll present on a specific tool or technique. And he'll actually demo it for the group. And then other times it's more loose, like people might just have questions or something cool that they noticed. But um, it's a nice collection of people. Some are just learning for the first time. Some are heavier users, but we kind of just hone in and take a deep dive on one thing or another. And I've really learned a ton ever since, even by osmosis, just by attending these. So it's another one. It's free to join. There's not as much maybe text-based discussion, but there is that regular weekly meetup, which has been fun. So um, take a look at that as well. And you can pop in and take a look and lurk if you want, or you can just jump into a Friday session with no intro and just say hello. Awesome. Okay. I know another topic that I feel like I've, I've seen people saying that they wish that there was, you know, a group that could get more focused on it is nonfiction graphic novels, nonfiction graphic novels for kids. Um, so I'm just throwing it out there. If anybody here might be interested in hosting something about that. Um, are there any other, I see Elizabeth, you said Procreate, Affinity, Affinity Publisher, any other topics that you feel like, oh, if we could only like go really deep on this thing, I would love to meet other people who are as obsessed with it as I am. You can put it in the chat. 
or you can shout it out. Adriana, what was the one that you mentioned? The no, a nonfiction. Oh, nonfiction. Yeah. Yeah, nonfiction. We we had a, a small discussion um, with this. There's a STEM group towards the bottom, but it it like lights up and then it dies down, and <laughs> so we need to kind of foster that fire. But yeah. I'm yeah, sure. but well, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that, Roger, because I think that um, one of the questions that I ask you to think about um, in my presentation, and I think I have it in the checklist, is like, is this something you want to do once, or is this something that you want to really foster and make into a regular occurrence? And I think if you do want to organize a meetup that continues, um, you do have to think about ways to keep keep that momentum and the energy and like how to foster that. So it's yeah. worth putting some real thought into upfront. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. Um, all right, a monthly book club. That would be super cool. It'd be interesting. Um, I don't know whether you'd wanna do a graphic novel book club just in general or maybe, um, middle grade or like creative process book club. There's all different ways you could do a book club. It would be so cool. InDesign, um, nonfiction, including biographies and history, new adults, nonfiction. Yeah. Humor, humor. <laughs> you could have a meetup all about how to be funny. I could use help there. I, I mean, I feel like I can be funny when I'm talking, but when it comes to, um, like making a comic, I don't, I, like I look at um, Janie Ho and her Chicken Girl comics and I just think they're so brilliant. I could never do that. I could never do what she does. I love it. <laughs> Patrick? Um, It's a really vestigial idea, but something that I've been thinking about that I guess I wanted to throw out there was like, um, who's, who's campaigning on about something next year? Right, because so much about campaigning and promotion is about like hitting, hitting that clock, hitting that beat at a consistent yeah. basis. So being able to like synchronize calendars, synchronize interests, synchronize resources, you know, wherein everyone can kind of work that together. Is a great, great, great idea. So, for instance, if you are crowdfunding and you know that you're planning to do your crowdfunding campaign in a certain month. Like who are other people who are also doing a campaign around the same period and and like coming together to hold each other accountable and share ideas and oh my gosh, that's so such a good idea. And then the other one would be like a book lunch. If you have a book that's scheduled to come out at a certain time next year, finding other buddies who also have books coming out around that time. Um, yes. Exactly. And then also a newsletter, launching a newsletter. Oh yeah, launching a newsletter. Yeah, you know, that's a then tough also one. Like, um, Going into that pot also like um, seeking appearances, right? Whether it's for the campaign or a book launch or whatever else, there's that whole process to like getting getting some kind of publicity. So in a way they're all, it's something we touched on in the crowdfunding crucible, mm -hmm. but it was just one small part of a really already intense thing. So just looking at it, that could be spread out over six months or a year. Yeah, so. yeah. I love that idea. Maybe you should ask. I mean, I don't know, Patrick, if you're thinking about starting one of those, but maybe you should ask in the community who else is interested and that way you'd find people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I am uh, amongst all the other all the other things. Yeah. All <laughs> of the things I'm thinking about. That's one of them. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And then Jenny, I saw you said support group. I definitely I think um sometimes just hangouts where people can be real is <laughs> a really good thing um bob speed like a speed drawing group that gets together to work on improving your speed could be really oh, cool i was actually thinking uh just pairing somebody's interested some writer that likes an artist style on kids comics and they just do a four page comic together just a four mm -hmm. or, or a quick one page comic just to see how it feels to collaborate yeah, or maybe doing, I mean, I think collaboration is a great idea. Also, um, playing games, just playing comics games together. Like, um, what's the, the corpse one? I'm forgetting. 
you know what I'm talking about? The game that has the word corpse. <laughs> exquisite corpse. Exquisite corpse. Yes. Playing exquisite corpse together. Yes. Something like or, that. Um, another one yeah. that's really fun is comic jams. Each per one person does a page and hands it off and you have a week to do something and then hand it off to the next person. And Yeah. 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 It something becomes like that. a. That sounds fun. <laughs> oh, and Sarah posted about Gardic phone. So yeah. Yeah. So many good ideas. Oh my gosh, it's 1.32. Today, I'm kind of like Cinderella because my son is doing a presentation at school and I have to go watch him. So I have to I have to end the meeting really abruptly. Um, but thank you so much, everybody. I'm gonna be posting like a write-up and including the links again to all the resources that I mentioned um, in the community tomorrow. It probably won't happen today. Um, but I am so excited for this challenge in January and oh my gosh, I, yes, I could not be more excited. So thank you everybody for coming. Thanks all. All right. Bye. Thanks.